Okay, here's the Daisy 35. I put a Weaver rail on here. It's called a Weaver to 11 millimeter. And then these are Weaver rings, and then I put a Beeman 4x32 scope on here. <clears throat> the reason why, because uh, you only need a 4x scope, or 4 power scope, for um, targets the size of an inch at 25 yards. So this would do fine. And uh, another reason for that scope is because of the fact that it does about, oh, I suppose about 3 inch 10 shot groups. So. You might get lucky and get a couple inches once in a while, but typically 10 shot group on this is probably going to be about 3 inches at 25 yards. So you want to pick a target that's about uh, 2.5 inches to 3 inches wide, and that's what I was uh, shooting at downrange. It was, uh, I think it's about 4 inches long by 2.5 inches wide. It's an electric, electrical outlet cover, a steel one from uh, electrical parts or whatever. And the pellet I'm using today with four pumps is the Meister Kogan 8.2. These are by RWS. This is kind of like the cheaper version of the 8.2 grain R10 match wad cutters. So here we are with this set up here. And it's kind of nice to have the weaver because I can put a dot sight on here. And if I did put a dot sight, if the dot sight is a uh, five minute of angle, that means that at 25 yards, it's probably going to appear to be oh, about an inch or something like that. And if you're going after two or three inch targets, that's plenty. The red dot sight should accommodate you for that. So anyway, I'll let you see down range here. So that box down there is 25 yards. And we got a little bit of rain today, not much, but uh, I might go in for a while. But let me let me show you the wind I'm dealing with. So once again, the Daisy 35 is a smooth bore, which means it has no rifling. It's just smooth in there. There's no twist or anything. So I want I want to get uh, some 11.5 grain silver arrows or silver points, they call them, H&N and, and Beeman make them, 11.5 grain. The reason why I like them so much is because I've had the best results with them. Now them I can honestly say I'd probably get a 2.5 inch group at 25 yards with uh, them pellets. But uh, I have over a hundred different kinds of pellets in 177 and I tried them all on smooth bores and I found out that physics is right when you don't have a twist you want something long, so the longer the pellet is, the it seems to do better. Because these uh, shorties, well, these ain't these ain't too short, but once you get them real short pellets, they kind of tumble on you. So once again, it doesn't have any rifling. So, and I found out that this Weaver attachment here, I took this off a of, uh, Umarex Fuel gas spring rifle. Um, anyway, this weaver attachment that I put on here, I found out that you can load pellets, usually the wad cutters in here. The round points are a little bit trickier than long ones, like the 10.5 grain, them are my favorite. It's a little trickier to load them in here. But uh, the wad cutters are fine, and usually what I do, when I load a wad cutter, I bring the bolt probe forward a little bit after I cock it a little. So if you look right in there, the bolt probe is just just right at the end there, but not so far back so the pellet goes in there, so. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to rain or anything, but uh, I'm going to probably give you some close-up shots. I think I'll take a couple shots close range, and I'll set up the camera so you can see what that looks like from 25 yards hitting that metal plate thing. Okay, so here's what I hold my camera with. It's just kind of a wooden gadget I made for myself. The, the camera fits in here, but it's a little snug. The camera in a used uh, Android phone that I got at Walmart. Um, 
you don't have to activate phones to use the apps and the camera and stuff. So I just bought it and I didn't activate it. But it makes a lovely uh, video camera. A lot of the videos you're seeing from me are coming from this one that I'm holding in my hand right now. It's uh, not too bad of a camera. So what I do is I'll set it up on a brick here. And then aim it at some of them targets there. So as I was telling you, it would be safe for me to say that it would be 3 inch groups at uh, 25 yards, but let me measure this and tell you what this is, because you heard me hit it a few times. Um, two and a half inches, so you can see why I hit it so much. Two and a half inches by four and a quarter, let's just say two and a half by four and a half is what it is. So it's uh, elevation forgiving but when it comes to windage it's less forgiving so so two and a half by four and a half and if we have groups that are three inches wide then there's a little bit of play on each side but that's one of the reasons why I kept hitting it because it's uh, sighted in for a three inch group so and these little guys I could go after them but uh, I might try a couple shots of them before the day is over with to show you what that looks like see test my luck on them so but all right, I'll take a couple at this uh, plate here, and then I'll set up the animals for you, too. I like these descending grade uh, sandboxes here. The reason why is because it has an incline elevation, so when you're shooting like one of these metal silhouette targets, if you do miss the sand, you'll see a little poof, a little smoke go up in the air. And what I did last year is I added a little bit of mortar to this so it'll really make it a uh, powdery when it gets hit so so you might see that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go after this one if I hit this one then I'm gonna move down and try to take out them so and like I was saying a four uh, a four power scope is pretty much meant for one inch targets at uh, 25 yards this guy here would be close to about an inch um, this is pushing it for a four power scope because that's the size of a dime typically typically you want to be about six power for that one and this one probably one power because <laughs> it's so big and this one too
Okay, so what we got here is a one inch aim point at 25 yards. I'm going to use that, and it is kind of blown around a little bit, but uh, so I'm going to tape a couple more of these uh, metal targets on it to hopefully weigh it down a little bit so it doesn't move, and then I'm going to do a 10 shot group with uh, four pumps.
Well, I think I'm impressed here. Um, there's always times that stuff like this happens. As you can see, when I was taking out these targets, I was holding over just a little bit because you notice that when I was aiming, shots were going low for these little ones. But uh, that's really impressive, so I'll, I'll meet you back at the table for that to discuss it. But uh, this piece right here, in case some of you wanted to know, it's a piece of copper bullion. Um, whenever I order gold and silver, sometimes I'll order a couple of these because they're only a dollar. But this is, I think it's one and a half inches wide. It makes a nice target, so I figure uh, it's nice to have targets that are just the right width but real thick. So this is one of my rounds that I use for a little target, just like that. Okay, I'm pretty impressed. Um, <clears throat> with nine shots, we ended up with uh, one and a quarter inch center to center for nine shots. And then if you guys will let me go on that one, we'll just call it one and a fourth. So, uh, yeah, ten shots. Uh, down here, it just describes some stuff for my information for my records. Um, hold on a sec. Why did I put Daisy 34 down there? I don't know. Okay, Daisy 35, 4x scope, 4 pumps. It's the 8.2 grain Meister Kulgan wad cutter. And let's see, I don't, it's kind of great for me to tell if, uh, if you're going to get good definition on the pellets or not. But anyway, there's the top, the bottom, and the side, just a little peek. Now, here's what you do. When you're sighting in a pellet, I like a little bit of holdover for what I was doing because I'm shooting indoors at 15 yards. So I didn't want to change around a lot of stuff. Uh, so so typically what I'll have to do is I'll have to hold over at 25 yards for this pellet. Um, but to make a correction, what you do is you take the center of this dot right here, which is one inch, and you take the center of the group, which is right here, and that's how you calculate your uh, click value. So for the correction, we want to take another shot group and move it up one inch from here to here. So that's approximately one inch. So that group will cover that black dot. And then we want to go over maybe like a half inch left. So we go that way. So um, when you sight it in, what you want to do is make sure even if you're getting three inch groups or you know the bigger groups that I was talking about just make sure that most of the pellets are around the center of the dot uh, so that way you'll have a zero um, it's impossible to have a perfect zero on a rifle that doesn't have perfect accuracy so if you're getting two or three inch groups it's impossible to have a half inch zero so you have to remember that your zero is only going to be as big as your shot group so that's why I like to fire 10 shots, find out what size it is. So now that I know it's one and a quarter inch, I can sight it in for that uh, that little uh, copper round I showed you down range there, because because uh, I think that's one and a half inches wide. So that would be a great target for this particular pellet. Now that's if it's going to do this again and again, uh, the consistency, but. This, that's why I do 10 shots to kind of look and see what the consistency is. So, but anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Okay, so there it is. Daisy 35. Yeah, so this weaver rail here is going to be really fun because I can put a dot sight on it and see what I can do with that out here sometime too.